everyone. Welcome to Dragonfly Engineering. Uh, this week we have something a little different. Uh, basically, uh, a informal video about homebrewing with some of my uh, friends in the area. So uh, enjoy, and uh, this is the final result. Uh, this beer has been in the bottle for about a week. It's a little overcarbonated, but we'll see how it pours here. And uh, yeah, so it's an IPA with lots of uh, lots of grain and. Uh, and uh, specific gravity to it. But it pours pretty good, a little on the uh, foamy side. But we'll go through the process of uh, how we got to this point. So uh, enjoy the video, uh, and I'll see you guys next week. We got the quality inspector here. Okay. How many things, Sierra? Is that good plumbing? Oh, yeah. Is that good plumbing here? Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Oh, I guess I just need to wrench it down harder. <laughs> okay. I'll add the drain strain. How's that liquid? It's just water. Okay, one mash ton ready to go. Oh, yeah, that's right. We did two of them. Uh, I, think I, I usually do 170 for the water. Like a 150 mash? Target? Yeah, so when the grain cools off the water, it uh, yeah. works. On? Yeah, I seem to want to cross through it. We got our boil here. Gonna get up to 170 on the dial. So when we add the hot water to the grain, the water cools off to 150, which is the uh, temperature for the for the extraction of sugars from the grain. Okay, that's uh, oh, what's that water temperature? Oh, it's a little, it's like 180 now. Oh, that's a little hot. Yeah, I guess by the time we get to it, it'll be uh, turn it off. Yeah, it's off. Oh, okay. So we're gonna we'll let the water drift a little. 170 is our target temperature, and we're currently at 180, so we'll let it cool off a bit. Can I ask anybody has a snow shovel in the shop? Or Oh, that's for uh, shoveling plastic. Shoveling plastic? That's my quasi clean one, but I didn't have a dust pan, so. Um, we want this up somewhere, right? Oh, I see. That goes. That'll work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. All right, so I think you're supposed to sprinkle the grain in as you're adding water. So, you don't, oh, so it doesn't just have grain in there and then stir it. Oh, yeah? It can go either way, though. I guess we could have Does it tested this for leaking, too, before we started looking. Oh, <laughs> yeah, instead of we put all this, all that grain in. I'm going to let it come up a little bit, just to make sure. So we're dumping all the ground grain into the uh, Home Depot water igloo, with, a.k.a. mash tun. And this is where, basically, we extract the sugars from the from the malted grain through enzymatic action with water that's ideally 150 degrees. Oh, hmm? Yeah, but we're at 180. So hopefully it'll cool off. We can put some ice in there too, I got ice. So the idea is that you boil your water to 170 and then when you dump the hot water into the room temperature grain, the temperature drops to 150, which is your enzymatic um, temperature. But we're about 10 degrees hotter right now. So we may have to put some ice in there. Or we'll just see what happens. 
just put some regular water in there. Yeah, or regular. Okay, well it doesn't seem no. to be leaking, that's good. Do you want to stir? Oh, yeah. And then also. Eh, it's fine. Some people say you're supposed to add grain and water equally so it doesn't clump up. So, but you know, everyone's got their their opinions. Oh yeah, there's <laughs> that thing at the bottom, isn't there? Oh yeah. Not the strainer at the bottom. I think somebody needs a giant spoon for cooking. Yeah, a metal one, not a plastic one. Mm. I broke the plastic one. You don't have any metal fabrication equipment. <laughs> I know. If only I had a big. Like a big press that big I could press. use to make it's spoons for home brewing. Make spoons for home brewing. That's a good idea, actually. Oh, for a TIG welder. <laughs> yeah. So you guys let this sit for an hour, and you watch for the uh, oh. the trub to separate. Yeah, we have. We, we do a cycle, too, with temperature control. Oh, ooh. So we start at 145, and then oh. we slowly creep up to 150, and then off the, off the, the mash at 170. Oh, okay. Oh, so I'm probably to getting some funky activate, flavors activate in here. the different enzymes, yeah. Yeah, maybe we should put regular water in. Yeah, it'd be nice to know. Do you have a thermometer of any sort? Uh, I need to set that up or get it. Bad though, not as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, that bucket will work. Yeah. So if it's too hot, then the enzymes aren't acting right, and you get off flavors in the beer. That's some serious agitation. Mm. Oh. What do you think? I thought we were a little thinner. 140. Oh. Uh, that's right at the top, though, where I poured the water. Yeah. Seven. And the heat's going to come up. Why don't you turn that gauge towards the camera? 146 is good. Isn't that good? Yeah, so you say you start with a little bit more of this in. You, you're saying you start with 146 and then... Yeah, we don't have a way of feeding 141. Perfect. One, man. It's like we meant to do it. <laughs> nice. Okay. Okay. Now we wait. The hard part. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Did you ever Vorloff? Vorloff. Vorloff is where you set a grain bed. So would we drain down into here and then close that and then put this back in the top? Oh, really? No. And, and what you end up doing is forming a grain filter down there. Oh. So yeah, you can, I know. Uh, you can do that until it comes out clear here. Really? And you'll end up with a clearer beer. Oh, I think we should try that. Let's try it out. We have time while that heats up. Oh, okay. Hopefully this doesn't dribble back. In. Yeah, because I guess it's just all the haze is particulate that doesn't add to the beer. Yeah. So this is the wort coming out of the mash tun. And we're going to basically run it through the uh, grain bed a second time, which acts as a filter to filter out basically all the micro particles that don't really do much. I guess they may contribute to some flavor, but not no, really. They don't. <coughs> All the because it settles in the bottle anyway. Yeah, everything's out of it. Yeah. Smells like malted milkshake. <laughs> Minus the milk. Now in my uh, my earlier brewing, which is like last year, I'd wind up with a hop flower that plugs. Because oh. I always half the time I forget to stick the hops in a in a in a cheesecloth or a strainer bag. Ready? Here we go. This is uh, 
and then I'm in there with a chopstick pushing out the, uh, <laughs> the hot flour. <laughs> That's a good idea. So what do you call that process? It's Vorloft. Vorloft. Is that named after a person? I, I don't know. The Vorloft process? It could be a German word. It sounds Russian to me. It's beer. It's probably German. Oh, good point. Yeah. Yeah. It does look clear, more clear now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Really good. Yeah, okay. So it's been about an hour of dribbling of the wart out of the mash tun. And uh, yeah, it's slow going. <laughs> I think I'm at five and a half gallons, uh, and there's still some coming out. I'll probably stop at six gallons. Uh, but Eric's going to start his off here pretty soon. Here we go. Well, that's definitely flowing. Uh, Eric's is flowing better than mine. <laughs> there seems to be a slight difference in the flow here. <laughs> yeah, so I had a really fine uh, grind and Eric's, Eric had his, uh, his grain ground at the brew shop. So if you grind your uh, grain too fine, you get this kind of a flow. And then when you coarse grind, you get a much faster flow out of your mash tun. But I can see some uh, green particulate in there. So I guess you are taking a little bit of a hit by the faster flow there. Yeah, and you can see clearly it's not as clear as what yours was. That's true, yeah. Clearly not as clear. Yeah, so it's all patience, I guess. But what, what do you typically get for, for your flow? Uh, in the past, my mash tun has always been a disaster. So <laughs> it's I don't have good metrics to... But I have, I've, I've been on the more slow side. So some people argue if it's too fast then you're not creating that filtration bed, but I don't know. You know it's still resting there. Yeah. So what what did what do you call it? The process? Mm, Sound like a Russian the volt, anyway, he, he the this part and he on the top. Vutog or vlog process. Yeah, you said it. Yeah. Let's get a thermal view. Here's a video of the hot work coming out. Let's see how the clear picks this up. Oh, I think it's recharacterizing or recalibrating its color. I don't know it's still. There's this beer flowing in. Whoops. Now it like reset its uh, color palette. Yeah, there it is. Let's see Sierra over there. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Sierra's got the characteristic cold nose. This thing resets its uh, color spectrum a lot. Oh, now she's hiding. She's camera shy. All right. So this is what the grain looks like after it's been draining for a while. Basically a big cake that's starting to constrict and surface crack. And then here's Eric's, basically it's just still... Wow, there's like big stalks in, in there. Look at that. Yeah. Big old like Very straw. Coarse, coarsely ground. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> but yeah, this color is about the same as mine. Even though it's completely different recipes. Huh. That's gonna be a pretty good beer, I think. Bucket. Oh, that's a lot of work. Okay. Make sure my valve is closed. And it is a lot. Now we're going to boil this for an hour and add the hops. 
uh, bitter hops and finishing hops. And watch it whoosh over. Oh, I can leave all that behind. Look at all that nastiness. That was a good separation right there, too. Yeah. Of course, half of it went in there, but oh well. And you're gonna, it's still warm, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're not gonna let it, you're gonna boil it now, and you're just gonna go for it? Um, versus go let it for yeah, cool to room temperature? Yeah, I'll just let it naturally cool off. I'm not gonna fuss with the, the chiller or the warp chiller. Yeah. Since my yeast has to. Take some hair off my arm. Okay. So one hour. I think it's one hour after you boil. Yeah. Or well, you put the, the bitter hops in after it boils and you boil for an hour. Yeah. So it when it starts through. to boil, you put the hops in. Yeah. 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 Oh, is it, oh, it's recording now? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna stick in about that much cascade hops. Hold on. We're just about to boil. Hold on. It's probably gonna whoosh over pretty soon, but it's okay because we're in the garage or the shop. You ready? Here we go. This is uh, whole flower hops instead of the pellet hops, which I'm not a big fan of. So, and it's about to boil over. So let's cut back on the heat. So this is gonna be pretty hoppy, I think. <laughs> oh, we have about that much left, so I guess it was five hop or no, about uh, four ounces, maybe. Let's stick some more in. That's gonna be a hoppy beer. Trying to grab that spoon. My witch's brew. So is it? Floral and no, this is the cascade. Yeah, that's do the floral pretty again. much citrusy, bitter. I actually grow this at my house, but I kind of was lax this year in harvesting, mm. and a mole rat got into my roots of my cascade hops yeah. and killed off like half of them. So, but I caught it and released it at the uh, at the uh, the flood control viaduct. <laughs> So I put a burrowing rat into a uh, flood control uh, system, so I could dig nice holes through the uh, through the dike. <laughs> oh, that's, that's that's so thoughtful. Of you, Dave. <laughs> yeah, especially since it's my house that would get flooded <laughs> when it compromises the flood control viaduct. <laughs> it's very humane. <laughs> I think I got a I got a picture of that guy. I caught it by uh, filling its hole with uh, water from the hose, mm -hmm. and then its entire system of tunnels you under my hops flushed it out, uh, flooded, and then it poked its head out, and then I was able to get it. <laughs> it was wet and unhappy, but alive. Mm. Okay, there we go. So we'll let it boil, and then uh, one hour we'll put the the finished hops in, or the the floral hops. Here's a stem right there. I don't think it matters. Get rid of that. There we go. One hour from now. Here's a video of the uh, boiling kettle. That's all hops to the to the right there. And then you can see the convection of the water. It's pretty neat. Just geeking out a little bit. Hey folks, so it's the next day uh, from our brew session and uh, I missed some of the uh, steps on video but basically uh, added the flower hops at the end of the boil and then uh, transferred the beer into the primary fermenter which is this five gallon plastic bucket with a spigot on the side there. Uh, I did forget to stick the bitter hops uh, which was the hops that were added to the boil at the beginning. Uh, into a bag, uh, like a cheesecloth bag. So I had uh, um, floating hops in my uh, boil at the end, which clogged the snout, uh, or the, you know, the equivalent snout or spout like this on the boil kettle. So I had to basically pour the beer into the secondary fermenter. 
Uh, the disadvantage of doing that is uh, some of the proteins that you'd like to keep behind or filter out, like trub is what it's called, uh, got added into my fermenter. But I'm going to transfer the beer into a secondary glass fermenter in a couple of days, so I don't think it's a big deal. But you can see how we got the pressure. Uh, oh, I didn't have my airlock either. So I just put a, a regular lid on this uh, fermenter. You can see how the lid is bowed up there from pressure. And you can probably hear some of it outgassing like that. That's CO2 coming off. So uh, today I got my sterilized airlock and I'm going to add it to this lid. Uh, so one second, I'll be right back. So this is what the top of the, uh, of the brew looks like. Nice uh, head of foam and as well as some uh, some hop flowers that wound up getting poured in there after after all. Not too big deal, but yeah, it's uh, the yeast is doing its job pretty good here. It smells really nice, uh, a lot of CO2 in there. And then this is the uh, airlock I added uh, to the top. So now the basically the CO2 will bubble through this uh, this mechanism here and prevent backflow of gas. All right, so it's been about a week. Uh, uh, the beer's been uh, uh, fermenting in the primary fermenter here with the airlock uh, there that I added on. Uh, and now I'm gonna transfer the beer to the secondary glass fermenter. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, start the spigot here. I've sterilized everything. I'm probably aerating the beer a little bit too. Uh, there is a gap on the bottom, so uh, hopefully some of the garbage remains. Uh, oops, actually I gotta pull this out. I'm sucking air through my uh, airlock. Anyway, so let's go ahead and fill this up with the beer and see how it looks. All right, there it is. This is the nut brown ale, high gravity. Uh, still pretty cloudy or opaque, but I guess it's only been a week uh, in the primary and I just churned it all up by transferring it to the secondary. So we'll see how it clarifies and uh, how it smells. All right, I'll talk to you in about a week. Bye. Here I'm uh, transferring the uh, beer from the secondary fermenter to a uh, bucket so that I can uh, bottle didn't really clarify too much, probably from my screw ups during the, uh, the boil and transfer process. Uh, or maybe I just have a hazy IPA. And this is the uh, sugar prime to carbonate the beer inside of the bottle uh, when we bottle here pretty soon. And this is what we're going to use to uh, put a little sugar in the beer to carbonate in the bottle. So I just pour this into the beer. I think it was about half a cup of sugar, corn sugar, and then I'll just mix it. You gotta mix it so that uh, you have uniform carbonation in all of your bottles. Some people say you're not supposed to add oxygen or air to the beer, but I do a little bit. I'd rather have uniform carbonation than, than not. <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna bottle uh, using the spigot, which is a lot easier than messing with the siphons. And you can hear the, the beer coming up on the top of the bottle, the sound changes. So now we're going to cap these with the uh, boiled and sterilized uh, bottle caps. So you just stick that on, whoop, stick that guy on there. And this is an adjustable height bottle capper. So you bring down the, the little bell capper thing and push. And there we are. That's one bottled. Coke bottle of beer. <laughs> oh, I'm a little too high. There we go. And that's it.